Hey guys and welcome and welcome back and I'm finally back from my long vacation to Korea and Japan and I spent about seven days in Seoul and one day in Busan, three days in Osaka and two days in Kyoto. I had an amazing time there. We could have easily spent more than a month on each of those cities but that was just the reality. And today I wanted to talk about my new camera, the Fuji X-T2. And this isn't exactly a new camera, it's been out for about two or three years now and the X-T3 just came out about six months ago and the reason why I bought this camera was because Dan Watson posted a video a few weeks ago called the most powerful camera under a thousand dollars and this was the camera that he was talking about. So for this trip as I mentioned in my previous video I took my 5D Mark IV with the 35 1.4 the 85 1.2 and the 50 1.2, the 8 to 15 fisheye lens and my 16 to 35. And I also purchased this camera specifically for this trip because I thought it would be nice to have a smaller camera just for the times when we're going out to bars and restaurants. And you know, it's supposed to be the most powerful camera under a thousand dollars. So I just wanted to see what it was like. So I bought this camera used from eBay and I also bought the lens. This is a 23 millimeter F2 lens. So the camera body and the lens with an extra battery and the grip all came together at about a thousand dollars which was an incredible deal and i've never actually used a fuji camera before and the main reason for that was because fuji does not make full frame cameras and i like using full frame cameras for my work but fujifilm has said in the past or at least somebody at fujifilm has said in the past that full frame is the thing of the past and if you have the right technology with the right sensor and the right lenses you don't really need a full frame to produce good results and after using this camera for two or three weeks i kind of agree with them and, and what's great about fuji is that because they focus on only making aps-c sensor cameras and lenses their lenses are much better optimized for their cameras and with great selections like the fast primes like the 56 1.2 you're really not going to miss full frame all that much once you start collecting all these lenses and I did some additional tests when I came back from my trip and as I suspected the images had more noise than my 5D Mark IVs but not by much. If you're mostly shooting in decent lighting under ISO 6400 most people won't be able to tell the difference. This is an older camera so I'm not going to go into too much details in this video but what you need to know is if you're someone who cares about megapixels and focusing points and all those things then let me just tell you that this has more than enough of everything. It has 24 megapixel sensor, it has over 300 focusing points, it can shoot up to 14 frames per second with the electronic shutter, it has a maximum shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second with the mechanical shutter, it can record 4K 30, it can do 1080 up to 120 frames per second, it has F-Log, it even has a lot of the pro features like the joystick and the dual card slots. And what's also interesting about this camera is that Fuji is famous for their customer support Port. and they've been updating this camera since it's launched uh, many many times and their firmware updates weren't just small bug fixes either they've been adding tons of features to this camera including the 120 frames per second recording in 1080 and was the 4k 30 an additional update I don't remember and also the f-log was added later so this is a very different camera than when it first came out and people love that about Fuji they always seem to be listening to their customers and they always seem to be fixing things adding things to their cameras so so today I wanted to mainly talk about is this camera really the best camera under a thousand dollars and what was it like to use it, my first impressions, and if there were any negatives. My first impression of the camera when I first received it was that it's actually a little bigger than I expected and the camera body itself is actually uh, just a tad bigger than the EOS RP. The EOS RP has a deeper grip but the X-T2's body itself was, is very slightly thicker and taller than the RP's and I just love the way it looks and feels and it feels like a very good blend of old and new and while I was in Korea I've been getting tons of comments and compliments about the camera and in Korea I guess Fuji is not as well known as some of the other camera brands and well I guess it's kind of like that here too because unless you're an enthusiast or if you're really into cameras if you probably know about Canon and Nikon but Fujifilm was probably not the first 
first name that came to your mind when you think of camera brands? Like when I was talking to some of my friends in Korea, they didn't even know that Fuji made cameras. But all of them seemed to be really interested in the way the camera looks. And as soon as they touched them, they wanted to buy one for themselves. And because I bought this camera used, there are some imperfections here and there. There are some marks and scratches everywhere. But I think that just kind of adds to the character of the camera itself. And I actually like it. So what was it like to use this camera? So as I mentioned, I brought all these Canon lenses and my 5D Mark IV with me. And I didn't think I would be using my X-T2 that often, but I ended up using this a lot more than I anticipated because, I mean, having all these lenses were definitely useful and I got to use them all. But then on the days when I knew I only needed one camera and one camera lens, which was usually the 35 millimeters, it just made much more sense to take this instead of this. And Korea and Japan are extremely dense and compact countries, especially in places like Seoul and Osaka and also worse in Tokyo, but I didn't go there this time. And most bars and restaurants there don't have a lot of extra space for your camera gears and your backpack. Very often you'll be sitting about two feet away from the chef while he's cooking your food. So just having this around my neck made my life a lot easier than carrying around this and my other lenses. And also because you're so close to other people all the time, you know, this is a lot less intimidating than having this in your face and also because I do a lot of street photography in most cases people in Korea and Japan don't care that much when their pictures get taken but with this around my neck I could look like a much less intimidating tourist while with this I can look like a much more serious photographer sometimes that can be good sometimes that can be bad so even though the weight and size of the cameras didn't bother me that much at least when I was taking pictures of people, I just felt like I could get a little closer to people with this camera and that was just getting me better shots overall. And the camera itself was such a joy to use and if you're a Fuji shooter, you probably understand this. And I love having all these manual dials for everything. And with most modern cameras, you have all these dials and buttons that are not clearly labeled. And if you're a beginner, things can be very confusing. And even for experienced photographers, if you switch from Canon to Nikon, for example, or from Nikon to Sony or whatever, you always kind of have to fiddle around with the buttons and just kind of try them all until you get used to them. But with this, you have dials that are clearly labeled with numbers for ISO and shutter speed and exposure compensation and even the lens itself has a manual ring to adjust the aperture so even for someone like me who's never used the Fuji camera before after just a few hours I feel like I've been using this for months I mean this is still an extremely advanced and complicated mirrorless camera don't get me wrong but once you figure out all the small details and find the settings that you like this becomes an extremely fun camera to use and if you feel like these dials are not quite quick enough for shooting events and weddings and things like that you can also change the settings using these dials on the right there's one at the front and one in the back like most uh, other cameras nowadays but I wasn't using this camera for work I was only using this for fun while traveling and well, I don't know if it was just me and my OCD but like it was just kind of weird having the top dials telling me one thing but then being able to change it to another so I didn't really bother but they're there if you need them and you also have the tilty screen on the back like most cameras do nowadays and it's not a touch screen unfortunately and i like my touch screens on my canon cameras but you know it's not a big deal and we lived without touch screens on cameras for ages and unlike the ones on sony cameras what's also unique about this screen is that it also flips this way vertically and i did have to use this one time we were at an abandoned amusement park in seoul and it had rained the day before so there were some puddles of water on the ground so i was able to bring this camera low to the ground and get some shots of the reflections and for photography alone i actually prefer this type of screen more than the ones on my canon cameras the one that flips out to the side and this is obviously useful if you're shooting vlogs or taking selfies but then there's always an additional step that you have to take when you're taking photos photos because you have to flip it out to the side and then flip it around to be able to see the screen you know it's really small thing but like you kind of miss it when you don't have it the screen itself is very bright and I had no trouble using it in bright sunny days but the viewfinder itself is even better there's virtually no lag it's very very big and high resolution I could always rely on it to get the focus and the right exposure and as I mentioned the camera even has a lot of pro features like the joystick to control the focusing points 
and it even has dual car slots which I'm only used to getting on like really high-end Canon cameras like the 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark II. I mean mind you this wasn't exactly a cheap camera when it first came out. I think it was about $1600 body only but at this price range currently the only similar cameras that I can think of right now are like maybe used 7D Mark II or a D500. And you know, some people may say that dual card slots are not necessary on a camera, but if Fuji can do it with a small camera like this, I don't know why we can't include it on bigger cameras like the EOS R or the EOS RP. And even if you don't use this camera for professional work, it's just really nice having that extra backup that happens automatically. And when you're traveling after spending thousands of dollars on plane tickets and hotels, you know, the last thing you want is losing all your photos. So is there anything that I don't like about the body design? Well, this still being a pretty small camera, some of the buttons and dials are a little too small and fiddly. I feel like some of the buttons are a little too easy to press accidentally and some of the buttons are a little too hard to get to. For example, this function button in between the dials here, I always have trouble reaching into that. And there's a button at the front that I always accidentally tap on. And there's a tiny little dial for focusing modes. I don't think this is all that necessary here. I, I always gets changed accidentally when it's in my bag and I usually use back button focus but the buttons on the back are kind of on a weird position so it gets kind of awkward so I just stopped using it on this camera but that could be subjective so that's really up to you. Oh and one more thing the body itself is weather sealed so it rained a lot while I was in Korea and Japan and I'm usually pretty careful with my gears and I don't just let it sit in the rain for hours but when it was raining and, and I didn't have an umbrella it was nice to know that it will be safe with just the minimum amount of water on top of it and also the startup time is pretty good on this camera unlike some other mirrorless cameras that I've used before and sometimes the screen itself takes a little longer to turn on and a lot of the times that I thought I missed the shot because the camera turned on too late I was actually glad to know that the camera actually has taken the shot before I even saw them on the screen and one time I saw this couple on the street holding their puppy and they quickly lifted up my camera and turned it on and took a few photos and when I looked at the back of the camera I only saw the picture of the lady but then when I was looking at the photos later uh, I saw the picture of the couple there so I was very glad the camera was able to take that photo and another thing that was especially useful for street photography was face tracking and you know the face tracking wasn't all that reliable when there was no good lighting and sometimes it seemed to be tracking the faces but it wasn't actually in focus so it got the shots about half the time and even when it missed focus slightly it was still good enough for most of my use I heard that the X-T3 had has a much better face detection and focuses a lot better in low light so I might try that when I get a chance later and uh, battery life is it's okay it's not great it's a little bigger battery than what goes inside the RP I believe I was traveling with two batteries and I was going through both of them pretty much every single day. With my Canon, I probably used maybe one and a half battery the entire trip. And with my Fuji, I was going through one and a half battery each day. But you know, as long as I charged them every night, it wasn't really a big deal. So to summarize, um, I'm a believer now. I love this camera. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. I love the way it shoots photos. I mean, what more could you want from a camera, right? So I can totally see myself using this camera a lot more in the future and I'll be probably buying more Fuji lenses. So if you want to know more about Fuji cameras and lenses on this channel, just let me know in the comments. And before I go, here are some more photos that I took with this camera during this trip. So enjoy them and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.